One of the major reasons for setting goals is for what they make of you in achieving them. My teacher advised me when I first got started at age 25, he said, Jim, why don't you set a goal to become a millionaire? He said, it's got a nice ring to it. You know, enough zeros to impress your accountant. And he said, I'm here to help you. You're only 25 years old. You've been to one year of college. You've got a beautiful family, every reason to do it. Why don't you set a goal to become a millionaire? And he said, here's why. And I thought, he doesn't need to teach me why. Wouldn't it be nice to have a million dollars? He said, no, then you'll miss it. He said, here's why. For what it will make of you to achieve it. I'm telling you, that statement changed my life. Set the kind of goals that will make something of you to achieve them. He said, now, once you become a millionaire, what's important is not the money. I thought, that's kind of strange teaching. He said, honest, it isn't important. He said, you could just give the money away. Now, I did better than that. I lost it all. By the time I was 31, I was a millionaire. By the time I was 33, I was broke. And I'll tell you a little bit about that story later. But when I lost all my money, guess what? I found out Mr. Shope was right. What was valuable was not the money. What was valuable was what I became to earn the money. The skills I had, the knowledge I had about the marketplace, the values that I had going for me, they were more valuable than the money. And here's an important statement to remember. It's not what you get that makes you valuable. It's what you become. So part of the key here is to set the kind of goals that will make something of you. Don't set them too low so that you don't have to grow and you don't have to read and you don't have to try and you don't have to stretch. Don't set them too low. And then don't sell out. Don't go for something that's going to cost you your virtue or cost you your values or sell out your principles. There's a good middle road here to follow. Goals that will inspire, goals that will help you grow, change, develop, and become better than you are. The major key to your reaching your goals is you. Nobody's going to work on your dream harder than you. Trust me on that one. You've got to take responsibility to make it happen. If it happens when you come out the gate, fine. But if you fail, so what? Come back again and again and again and again. If it's something that you love, if it's your passion, until you do it. George Bernard Shaw said, the people that make it in this life, they look around for the circumstances that they want, and if they can't find them, they create them. Here's something else. It's hard. When I bought the first home for my mother, and they did a, and I didn't do a title search, and a guy sued me, and I had to move out from the big, beautiful home I bought her to a roach-infested home I moved her out of. And the neighbors came out and said, "Maybe y'all back? Yes, what happened? My boy lost the house. He didn't do a title search. And we had to get out. They foreclosed on the house. He didn't have the $50,000 to pay the guy who put a lien on the property. It was devastating. But let me tell you something, it was worth it because I came back. 90 days later, I got a bigger and better house. 90 days later, I stayed focused on the goal. And that's the thing that you want to do. Stay focused on your goal. Keep the main thing the main thing. You're going to have distractions. That's a part of the process. It's not there to stop you. It's only there to challenge you. You want to grow through it. You know, I think it was Robert Shul who said, tough times never last, but tough people do. Keep the main thing, the main thing. You going through hell? Don't stop. Keep moving. That's the name of the game. Keep on swinging. One of my favorite movies is, is Cool Hand Luke and, 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 and Paul Newman. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie, but there's a scene where Cool Hand Luke is fighting a guy. Guy, big dude, just kept knocking him down. Bam! That kept on knocking him down. Cool Hand would get up, he'd knock him down. Bam! And pretty soon the guys would feel inside and say, Stay down, Cool Hand. Stay down. Cool hand Luke would get back up again. Guy would knock him down. Bam! The guy would say, stay down, man, stay down. Cool hand would get back up again. The guy would knock him down. Bam! And after a while, the guy got tired of knocking cool hand down. And cool hand stood up. Everybody had walked away, and he was still swinging in the wind. Swinging. Nobody was there but him. That's who I am. Cool hand Luke. That's who you want to be. Cool hand Luke. You keep on swinging, and the universe will yield to you. It will dispatch angels to come rescue you and say back off give him what he wants give her what she wants let's go find a whip today that's the way life is it's hard but it's worth it what it will make it worth it for you Nietzsche said if you know the why for living 
you can do almost anyhow. I want you to take the time and write down 12 reasons on why you won't fail. Because when the tough times come, they're going to come. When life hits you on the blind side, and that's going to happen, your children start going crazy. Or someone you thought you'd be married to for the rest of your life, like I went through, and they decide they want a divorce, call life. What is it that can keep you going? Your reasons will be your rod and staff to comfort you, to take you through that process. I can tell you it's possible. You can live your dreams. It's necessary that you surround yourself with people you can learn from and grow from, that you write your goals out, you work on them every day, that you have a made of mind, I'm going to make it. It's necessary that you constantly work on yourself, reading positive material, listening to positive material, going to seminars and workshops, investing in yourself, getting a coach. And it's you. You've got to take personal responsibility to make it happen. Don't see yourself as a victim. And it's hard. It's hard. Changing your life is hard. Getting up, working when you're in pain is hard. It's hard. It's hard. Working when you are trying to make something happen for you and the family and you go home and, and you're facing a living hell where you need to refuel and replenish yourself mentally and emotionally and spiritually and you got a battle in your home base. It's hard to keep your spirit up. It's hard. And people don't see the vision. They don't believe in you. They say, oh, you can count on me. And they're not there. They just lied. They're only there when they need you. It's hard. I can tell you. It's worth it. The sacrifice that you have to make, I can tell you from my experience, it's worth it. So take the time to write down, what are those 12 reasons of why you won't give up? What is it that will make it worth it for you? And once you find that, you will create some momentum in your life, and then it's done. I don't know what your goals are. I don't know what your dreams are. Here's what I know about you. You have greatness within you. Here's what I know about you, and I don't even know you, but based upon my own experience, you were chosen on purpose for a purpose, one out of 400 million sperm. You have greatness within you, but greatness is a choice. It's not your destiny. It's a choice that you have to make every day. Choose ye this day whom ye shall serve, the mediocre part of yourself or the greatness that you were chosen for. What does it take to successfully create a lasting change in your life, to not only have a New Year's resolution you follow through on, but really have a lasting change. Well, the first step for lasting change is very much like making a New Year's resolution. Fundamentally, it's the same. The first step is you gotta have a vision, a vision for what it is you really, truly want. Not what you think you want or what you should have. I mean, what are most people's New Year's resolutions? Oh, I'm gonna stop eating sugar. You know, I'm gonna stop smoking. I'm gonna lose 10 pounds. The problem with that is it's not very inspiring for most people. You know, it's not telling you what you're going to get, it's only what you're not going to do. And it's kind of hard to have you move forward with that. A vision is about what you're here to create. A vision that really works is one that excites you. If you say, well, my, you know, my resolution, my goal, my outcome for this month, this week, this year is to lose X number of pounds, that's okay, but it's not very compelling. It has to be a compelling vision. It's got to have something that has the power to pull you, not something you have to push yourself to do. Those are two different kinds of motivation. Push requires willpower, and willpower never lasts. What will last is pull. Having something so exciting, so attractive, so something you desire so much that you have a hard time going to sleep at night and you get so up early in the morning to a rocket and take it to the next level. That's what you're looking to create. And that isn't easy to get. But one of the reasons we do seminars and events, and we say, you know, why do that? Why, isn't, why not just read a book or something? Is because when you get in an environment where you're with people that are being put in a peak state, like when you're going to a sporting event, if you watch a sporting event at home, it might have a certain level of excitement. But when you're in a stadium with 50,000 people, suddenly it has a whole different level of intensity. And we feel that. And the bottom line of our follow through comes down to our emotional intensity. In a different state of mind, you're going to come up with a much better and a more exciting vision than if you're sitting on the couch going, okay, what are my new resolutions for this year? And you're doing it the morning after the new year has started and you're a little inebriated. <laughs> and the football game's on in the background. Probably not going to have the power of focus there. Probably not going to have the power of the energy to create something that's going to pull you for this year. And you got to do that. So it's got to be a vision that's compelling. Something that you know it's going to be a gift to make sure that it happens. And also, along with that compelling vision, you gotta have strong enough reasons that you're gonna follow through when the going gets tough.
That's one of the biggest things missing for most people. They say, oh, this is what I want to do. It's not very exciting, it's not very compelling, but most importantly, they don't have strong enough reasons to push themselves through what's going to be necessary to get that dream, to get that goal, when the inevitable challenges come up, when you're starving hungry and you're trying to go on a diet, right? When you got no time and you're stressed out and you haven't worked out still and that's what you're supposed to do. When the economy gets tight and what you thought you're going to do doesn't work and so you give up on the goal instead of finding another way to get there. You don't let the fear take you over if you've got strong enough reasons. Those reasons can be positive or those reasons can also be negative. They can be, if I don't do this, this is what's going to cost me. And if I do do this, this is what I'm going to gain in my life. Reasons come first, answers come second. If you get a compelling vision and you got strong enough reasons that will push you through the tough times, you're going to do things other people don't do. Instead of collapsing, even if you get off target, you won't go, oh, I blew it. You'll get right back on target, make the change, make things happen. And I know you've done this in many areas of your life. Just think about it again. I'm, I'm not teaching you something really new here today. I just want to remind you of what your soul knows. You got to change, you got to improve, and you got to go through a simple process fundamentally to make that progress. First step, vision that's compelling. Second step, make sure that there's strong enough reasons to follow through. Third step, you got to review it and feel it every day. I mean, anything. Have you ever had this happen in your life? Has there been anything in your life that you've ever wanted so badly, you were so desirous of it, you had such a hunger for it, that you couldn't stop thinking about it. it could have been a career move, could have been when you're a kid, a, a car, it could have been a relationship, it could have been anything, but you were obsessed. You wanted to make this happen, you wanted to attract this to your life, you, wanted, you just wanted something. And you didn't even know how to get it, but it was so compelling to you, you kept thinking about it every day, envisioning it, imagining it, feeling it, and then stuff happened and suddenly you started to attract people or situations to your life and it just came together. Like, you didn't even have a total plan. It was just that it was so a part of your focus with so much intensity and emotion so often that it sensitized you to notice anything that could get you there. There's a part of your brain called the reticular activating system. For short, we call it the RAS. That part of your brain determines what you notice in the world. And it's really important because when you set a goal, when you get really clear on a vision, and there's strong enough reasons, and you review it enough, and it becomes a part of you, that part of your brain says, anything that relates to this, I need to notice. It's like, did you ever buy a certain kind of car, or maybe a, a certain outfit, and suddenly you see that car everywhere, or those outfits everywhere? Well, you know the cars were always around, but why do you see it now? Because your RAS knows this is important, this is part of my world now. Similarly, when you really get clear, and it's compelling, and you're reviewing it every day, you've got strong reasons and you're reviewing it every day and you're feeling it, the brain becomes incredibly acute at noticing anything to get you to move forward. And so that's the power of this. So, you know, what do people do with a New Year's resolution? They come up with something they kind of want. It's not a compelling vision. They don't really have strong enough reasons and they never review it again until they notice that they broke what they said they really want to have make happen because they didn't really resolve. If you resolve, you got the vision, it's compelling, you review it daily and you feel it. You envision it and you experience it. Simple as it sounds.